take it away. Awesome, thanks so much. So, my name is Kelly Williams, and I'm a supervisory librarian at the Gwinnett County Public Library. Um, it sounds like you all are in academia, so I think this is going to be a little bit different, but I think it's applicable to anybody who wants to improve their virtual transactions or their recorded programs or lessons. Um, I think any library can improve their recorded programs or lessons and expand their reach online, and hopefully this presentation will help show you how. So, love in the time of cholera uh, during COVID-19, we've been doing a lot of virtual presentations and programming and lessons and reference transactions with Zoom and Google Meet and Blackboard online live with our customers, but we've also been putting a lot of our programs on YouTube and Facebook. And I think that there are a lot of great ways, a lot of great things about virtual presentations and recording them and putting them on Facebook or later, um, and let's talk a little bit about how you can get those best accessible to your people. So when we're posting our programs on YouTube, um, there are a lot of things that are great about it, and but there's not a lot of ways to get feedback from it. So how are people taking them? Are they watching them? Are they going all the way through? YouTube has a lot of great ways that you can discover things like that, um, but we don't since we don't have access to the analytics side of it, what we're stuck with is doing something that I personally don't recommend, and that is consistently refreshing, refreshing to see how many views you have on your uh, videos. It's not great. Um, another thing that YouTube can help with is YouTube comments, but I don't know if you can see it here, but this is one of our more popular videos. We have over a thousand views on this, but we only have four comments. So it's not something that we're getting a lot of feedback from. And it's not super helpful for my staff either um, because they, you know, they're essentially shouting into the void. They're putting their programs out there and they're not getting anything back from it. So what can we do to help that and how can we help them get some more feedback on their recorded programs? The first thing that we did was we required them to put together a storyboard before they did their recording. So as you can see here, we've got part one, part two, part, part three. Um, they had to fill out the storyboard completely with the uh, media, slides, anything that they wanted to do, that's part one. Part two, they put their script so they would be able to read that later, specifically what they were gonna say on screen before they said it. And number three, time. So you know, with YouTube programs, people are, very short-sighted. They don't want to sit through a 15-minute YouTube video. They want short and snappy. That's why TikTok is so popular now. So we wanted to make sure that we were doing it in a short amount of time so that we could keep people's attention for as long as possible. Um, this gave us opportunity number one for feedback. Um, we were able to put comments on their storyboards and maybe improve it before we even got to the filming process. So as you can see, it took my staff some time getting used to, but it was a great way to get them kind of an idea of what was going to be happening when they recorded these programs before they even got to the filming. Now, when they get to the filming, there's actually a lot more opportunities for us to give feedback. Um, you can see here, this is my uh, boss, Mac. Um, he did, the way we did our virtual programs in the beginning was we were doing sage on a stage presentations basically they would talk into the camera and we would have slides every so often we have an intro and an outro and that's fine but if you're not looking for straight up information you're looking for fun um, it wasn't exactly the best way to get it across but the thing about filming is that it gives us the opportunity if we're standing there helping them film it gives us the opportunity to change up lighting, to change the sound, to maybe if they're kind of ad-libbing their script, to kind of point them in the right direction. So as they're filming, they're getting this great feedback on how they can improve it before it even gets posted. Um, you can see here that, um, this is me actually on the right, uh, we're filming in my branch for a video that you can see now on our YouTube page. So the main thing that I wanted to talk about today and the thing that I am super proud of that we instituted in our branch is post-program feedback. So this is something that after it's been posted to Facebook or YouTube or wherever it is, it's live. And we asked our staff to 
use some of their training time to watch each other's programs and give feedback on it. So we ask them for two or three positive comments and one piece of constructive criticism that the person could use to improve their programs in the future. Um, this actually ended up having a lot of tangible and intangible benefits. So the first of these tangible benefits is that it does increase the number of views that we have on, on our programs. Um, this is similar to counting numbers, counting heads for in-person program attendance. Um, so as you can see, we've got a more recent one with only 10 views and one of the older ones with 48 views. We count about a month's worth of these views at a time. Um, so having our staff watch it does help bump those numbers up a little bit. The second tangible benefit and probably my favorite is that the staff then have in writing some things that were good about their programs and some things that they can improve upon in the future. Um, so you can see here the acting is hilarious and well done. Uh, Gina has a pleasant speaking voice. I know she enjoyed reading that. Um, the length of your video was good. It was cool that you filmed outside. These were the kind of comments that my staff were giving each other. So they were giving their peers this excellent feedback. Um, and it made them feel a lot better about their programming. Um, an intangible benefit of this is that weeks or even months after their program is posted, they're getting these serotonin boosts. Um, it basically has the same effect of some customer attending one of our programs and then coming back a couple of weeks later telling us that like they had a good time, they made friends out of that program, and it made them excited about coming back to the library. Um, it's not something that we've had since we've been virtual, and I think it's something that my staff has really appreciated. Um, since we're not getting those comments or those uh, customer interactions that we're used to. Uh, you can see here two of my staff members were actually out in the woods filming. Um, and then Lori on the bottom right was doing an experiment showing kids how rain works. Um, give us a chance to use up some of the shaving cream supplies from our previous slime making experiments. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and lastly, one of the intangible benefits that it has is that it has the potential to improve the staff member who's watching the program, their future programs. So maybe it gets them out of their comfort zone, it, it gets them a chance to see each other's programs, which is not something that we had the time for pre-COVID. Um, it gives them a chance to maybe get ideas about their own programs or copy something that one of their coworkers was doing. Um, and just deepen the amount of energy and effort that we're getting out of these programs. So lastly, making an impact is something that we want our programs to do. Our programs, lessons, anything that can be recorded and posted online, we want to know that it's doing good for the community and it's doing good for us. So um, are we keeping in touch with our community via our programs? Are we keeping our programming skills sharp? These are all things that we can do and that we can decide by watching these programs after they've been recorded. Um, and you can see my friend Sarah here for our World Ocean Day. We had a lot of fun with the green screen for that one. So finally, what's the end game? How can this help your recordings improve? Um, having staff give each other feedback on their programs is great and it means that they're getting some constructive ideas about how they can improve their recordings in the future. Um, they're maybe getting ideas about how they can improve their own programs. And we're getting, you know, we're getting to feel like we're still doing a good thing for the community, that we're putting out programs that people enjoy and that we're having an effect that people like us. You know, they want to keep coming back to the library even after we reopen. So our success story is staff feedback, but I think that any library can improve their recorded programs or lessons and expand their reach online. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed this brief presentation. Um, if you have any questions or if you want to see more examples of how we set up our storyboards before filming, um, please feel free to reach out to me at my email address at any time. Um, and I really appreciate you all watching today. I have a credit slide to show at the very end. This is all the videos that uh, my staff members were featured in for this presentation. Thank you. Okay, do we have any questions? And feel free to speak or chat, whichever. And we'll give just a minute. 
Hey, Kelly. <laughs> this is Kelly. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, Please. sorry. <laughs> this is Lee Olson from Mercer University. Um, how? Um, what did y'all use to give feedback to each other? I may have missed that. I don't know. I could. I wasn't sure if it like. Are you? Do you email each other, or is there? A, are you? Yeah. So we tested it kind of two ways. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. Go. I'm done. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Um, so what we asked them to do was we asked them to email that staff member their feedback and also to CC the supervisors on it. So we had kind of a record of the types of feedback that people were getting. Um, and what was funny is some of the constructive criticism that we were getting was about how the videos were edited, um, which since I was one of the primary video editors at the time, <laughs> ended up being geared mostly towards me and then all the positive stuff was geared towards my staff, which I thought was really funny. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks, Lee. Okay, do we have any more questions? All right, um, hearing none, I'll go ahead and stop the recording. Thanks, guys. <laughs>